Oh, oh, oh. 
touch heaven so bad you can't understand it you just can't just get a glimpse sometime of what God wants you to do and I've been praying for two or three days and God had touched my heart just touch just give me a message to preach and I, I, I went to bed last night and prayed and I ain't slept much about all week and uh, I told brother Jeff and Petey there last night I said I'm going home I said I'm tired feel like I'm getting sleepy and if I don't go home right now, I said, I won't make it to the house. I said, I'll go to sleep going home. I got home, got cleaned up, went straight on the bed. 
slept pretty hard last night and I prayed real hard that God would just give me a message for tonight. And I got up this morning and this scripture hadn't been on my mind in a long time. And this scripture came to my mind. So as I went to work this morning, I didn't grab my tools, but I grabbed my Bible. And I took my Bible with me this morning. And all day long, Jerry, I prayed. God, are you sure this is what you want me to read? And every time I'd pray, the Scripture just kept coming back in my mind. And I asked God to come home this evening. Sometimes if you really pray earnest and God puts things on your mind, the devil will come along and try to get your mind on everything in this world. Amen. I've had, amen. I had two tires going flat before I ever left work. Amen. One of them we plugged, took three plugs, amen, to stop the hole up. And I asked God, amen, coming, I was still leaking when I left work, amen. And I told God, I said, God, just let me make it home. Praise God. And when I left this evening and come on over here, praise God, it was still had air in it. So you just keep a praying. I believe God will take care of it. If not, amen, I'll just jump in something else and go on. Amen. I'm not going to get excited. But you pray. This, this scripture's still on my mind tonight. And if you will, go with me to Ezekiel, amen, chapter 13. Come to my mind before I ever open my eyes this morning. Still on my mind, praise God. And I wondered about a lot of things, brother, we see happen in the world today. And we see things, amen, and praise God, people starving to death for the things of God. And people weak, amen, and falling apart. And praise God, falling out of the house of God because they've lost the desire for the things of God, amen, because they're hungry, hallelujah. The sheep's got weak, brother. And I begin to think about things, amen, and praise be unto God as they begin to sing that. Amen. When you're looking at me, you're looking at a miracle. Amen. I remember a day in my life, sister, whenever the drugs that I used to run with, thought there wasn't no hope for day miles. I had nothing could touch him. Amen. And praise God, there wasn't no hope for me. But thanks be to God. I, and I had a dear old grandma I, that's gone on to be with Jesus. I, amen. And right through I, on my behalf. Before she ever left this world, amen. She's done in heaven. When God saved me, brother. But I believe she's shouting the victory. When her God, woo, when her grandson gave his life to Jesus. You can't tell me that there ain't no excitement and glory when Jesus Christ over that blessed book of the Lamb's book of life, amen. And begins to write down the name. Hey, they know, brother. All the inhabitants of heaven know. I sat here in my mind this week for a while and now I'm just going back in time and seeing things and I look back, I, I told somebody this this week, amen. And it's talking about their kids, amen, and worrying them and they just seven, eight, nine year old. I said, My God, you ain't seen nothing yet. Amen. Amen. I worry about my girls more right now, amen, than I ever did when they was babies. Amen. Huh? Amen. I worry about them more now than I ever did when they was the size of these little ones. Amen. And I thought about the truth as there's a singing there, and I'm going to preach it a minute. We're fixing to have church. Amen. If you ain't already got in this thing tonight, you need to get everything off your mind that's in this world, praise God. You're in the house of God now. And you ought to come to worship the Father. Amen. Praise be unto God. It's a house of worship. And you're singing about the moms and the dads that come on before them, brother. Praise God. I remember when your mama left that hospital room. Praise God. But I'm here to tell you, brother. Praise God. I believe it's shouting going on in heaven. Amen. And praise God. There's some promises been made in that room. And somebody's going to have to pay before they leave this world. Praise God, you better get ready. Amen. Amen. I preached for several years, brother. And I promised God when they ordained me to preach, I'd preach like it's my last time in this world every time I stood. And for 20 long years, almost 20 years, I've stood every day and tried to preach the gospel. 
I drop my girls to every church they are in the country, praise God, and some of them, even in this country, amen. And praise God, amen, listen, and they heard the preaching, and they've seen the power of God. They saw the witness of the Holy Ghost, amen. They know what's real and what ain't. Amen. Can I get an amen and say, preacher, you've lost your mind? One morning I was sitting there at the house, I'm going to tell this, and then I'm going to preach. As David said, is there not a cause? I was sitting there, praise God, and Melinda was in the bathroom getting ready and Kelsey come through the, through the house and she just a little girl. Crawled up my lap and started to cry. And I mean the tears was a rolling. And she said, Daddy, I don't want to go to hell. And I said, honey, you don't have to. Amen. You see, Jesus Christ died for all humanity Amen. that everybody can go to hell if they want. Amen. 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 And the hardest thing I ever done in my life was set that young and down on the floor. Praise God and her not saved. I said, do you want me to pray with you? She said, not this morning. And just run off a cry. And Brother Josh, I began to pray earnest. And I said, God, you send a meeting. I don't know where it's going to be, but I said, Lord, you send her somewhere where this baby could get saved. Amen. Praise be unto God and give her life to you. Amen. Amen. Lo and behold, sister, God put it on her heart to go to the schools and the gymnasiums and praise God to have revival. And people talked about me like a dog and said, you can't do it. I'll never forget the first meeting we had in the East Central High School Gymnasium. Amen. Praise be unto God, they told me that you can't have it up for two days. I said, I need it for a week. They said, ain't no money. I said, well, we'll start with the two days and we'll see what God's got to happen. Amen. We stayed for a week. Amen. Say, preacher, you're crazy. There's seven souls saved in that gymnasium, brother. I seen the lights go out. Amen. And praise God, I scared everybody to death when the power of God began to move. Hey, praise God. I seen heaven move. I've seen the glory of God. I've witnessed the power of God. I've seen God save me. Amen. We went from my Central to White Top. Remember? <coughs> hey, God's allowed us excited over yonder at Mount Rogers School Gymnasium. Hey, man, that even the holiness wasn't hanging there. Bless the Lord. You can like, but there's a holiness preacher said we too loud for him. Hey, man, come on. Amen. Amen. He left us. God let him walk down. I'll never forget that meeting. You know why? Because they were singing old hymns of glory, amen, and the power of God to move it. Praise God, I heard a rumble, amen. Amen, the bleachers started to move. And you know what I saw? I saw two little blonde-haired girls making their way toward the pulpit, amen. And one of them sat right here tonight, amen. I remember when she crawled to the altar, amen, on her face and began to cry. I remember a sister praying with her. I've seen God work in their life. And my oldest daughter is confused. My Lord. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. And you talk about her if you want to, but he'll come home. You better be careful. Bless you, Lord. Amen. And I'm going to preach tonight why she's confused. But she's coming back. Amen. Amen. She's tasted the goodness of God. Amen. There's a whole lot of ungodly people that face that go right into the house of God every Sunday morning. Amen. Amen. And the people in the community face are all right. But by their morals and what they stand for, praise God. Amen. Let me talk to the Word of God. I'm going to preach a little bit. Hey man, now listen to me. You get mad at me tonight if you want to, but sin will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Hey Amen. And the Bible said, hey Amen. Praise be unto God if you're still living in sin, then you hate God according to the Word of God. But the Bible said, them and love Him. Hey Amen. Keep His commandments. Hallelujah. They live for Him. Hallelujah. Praise be unto God. Amen. I'm going to preach a little. 
Blessing my Lord on. Thirteenth chapter of the book of Ezekiel, amen. I want you to read along with me, be on my mind ever since four daylight. Amen, brother. You want to know why people's like you are? I'm going to tell you. I'm going to blame it on the ones that's in the pulpit. Yeah, bless Amen. you, Lord. Come on. Right. The Bible spoke about the head being sick. Amen. Praise God. He wasn't talking about Jesus. Amen. He was talking about the ones who were standing in the pulpit of America Center of preaching hell right out of the pulpit. Amen. And preaching the gospel. You let me enlighten you just a little bit on something tonight. Amen. Being able to quote the word. Amen. From cover to cover is not the gospel. Amen. Honey, let's just quote the book. If you don't believe it, it ain't nothing. The Bible said the gospel is the power of God and the salvation. Amen. If it ain't anointing of God, it ain't the gospel. Nothing more. I'm going to preach you up here today. Praise God. Look at it. I thought my battles was going to be hard with the people on the streets. Amen. But it ain't hard in the streets. The Bible said they'd take you up to synagogues and scourge you for my name's sake. Amen. Honey, it ain't the drunks and the alcoholics. Amen. The drug addicts. Praise God. That's giving God's people a hard time. Amen. It's a religious cause. Amen. Bible teaches me if any man come preaching any other gospel, for him to be a curse. Amen? Amen. The Bible calls them a false prophet. I don't care how good you think they are. I just count his full of them. Amen. Amen. That's right. That's right. What do you think told your youngin' that she could go on and drink and get from here to glory, amen? You know what that was? It was a false prophet, amen? amen. Praise God, I don't care who it is. Amen. Who do you... I've got to preach. i got to read this before I get stirred up. I know I make people uncomfortable, brother. I make a lot of people nervous. You know why? Because they're afraid I'm going to open my mouth. Amen. 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 Scares them to death. Yep. Come on. I, I had a man on my heart one morning. Prayed for him since about 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning. So when it got daylight, I gave him time to get out of the bed. And I called him. And I said, I just wonder, pray to God, is everything all right with you? Amen. He said, my God, why? I said, I've been awake ever since 3 o'clock. I'm praying to God. Amen for you. Amen. Praise be unto God. Why like scare him to death? He knows he ain't right with God, and I know he ain't right with God. So, hey, preacher, you can't judge. I don't have to judge. According to the Word of God, your friends will tell me who you belong to. Can I get a amen? Hey, come on now. <coughs> but I live for the Lord part of the time. That's like drinking a beer every now and then. Praise God, you're still a drunk. Come on, praise God. Woo! on the this is their favorite verse. You can't judge me. Praise God, I don't have to. I'm going to show you right here. This right here will judge you. If this finds you guilty, you're guilty. I don't care what the preachers in Ace County told you is all right. Can I get an amen? Come on, now don't get quiet on me tonight. Praise God, it's may get mean before it ever gets any better, but it's going to do you some good. Honey, you want to know why, praise God, things are drying up? Amen. The church houses of America, men, amen, of God is backed up on the Word of God, and they compromise. Hallelujah. The Bible said a house divided. Amen. Amen. It cannot stand. Hey, praise God, it may get it desolate. You want to know why the things are drying up? Amen. The house is divided. Amen. Praise God. We got to overlook one another just to get along. 
I'm going to stay straight up. The only way you can walk with me is to agree with the Word of God. Amen. Amen. There's a fellow told not too many years ago, he told that I was a fanatic. That's what he said. He said Dave Lyles is a fanatic. And he believes that if you don't believe the way he believes, that you'll die and go to hell. You can't make it. So, now I've told you this many times. Don't be talking about somebody because the one you're talking to is going to go straight and tell. Right. I don't care if you right. tell them, please don't tell nothing. It's human nature to tell everything it knows. Can I get an amen? amen. I tell people all the time, my God, don't tell me. I tell everything I know. Amen. I cannot keep a secret. I'm telling you straight up. Come on, say, preacher, I told you some secret things. Now, between me and you and God, nobody else will ever find it out. But don't come to me and say, hey, don't go tell so and so. Because, praise God, I'll be somewhere and it'll slip out. It can't happen. Amen. Amen. <laughs> don't like you the same way. It's human nature. There's the truth. But this old boy come and told me, he said, you know what so-and-so said about you? I said, well, I don't know, but you're going to tell me I know. <laughs> <laughs> so go ahead and let it come, because oh, tell me. <laughs> he said, he said, you're a fanatic. He said, you praise God, you believe that if people don't believe exactly the way you do, they'll not make it to heaven. And he said he wouldn't come listen to you preaching no means. And I started to get mad. And I caught myself. And I thought, my God, sister, he's exactly right. So I told him, I said, you know what? That fella's right. He said, what? I said, that's exactly how I believe. Hey, Amen. I believe that if you not repent of your sins, then washed in the blood of the Lamb and Jesus Christ your Savior, you'll not make it to glory. Can I get an amen? That's the gospel, amen. You don't have to go with me. Just get out of the way. I thought about this thing. I watch people suffer every day. I listen to them every day. Even had somebody call me and say, Preacher, you've got to pray for me and my family. We're drying up. I said, Why? Said the church has fell apart. There's nobody left, just us, my family, and just a few left of us, and we're starving to death. I said, why? Said, what do you mean, why? I said, why in the world would you set a dead place, amen, and die sitting right on the church bench hungry, amen, for the things of God? I said, my old horse has even got more sense than that. When they get hungry, they'll turn a fence down and go get something to eat. Can I get an amen? I said, maybe it's time for you and your family find out where God's a feeding the sheep and get out of the bucket, amen. Amen. <laughs> well, that's good advice. I don't hear who it comes from. Amen. 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 Because I'm going to preach to you tonight. 13th chapter, book of Ezekiel. The Bible said this starting at the first verse. The Bible said, And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel that prophesy and say thou unto them that, pro that prophesy out of their own hearts. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Amen. Did you hear what he just saw, told Ezekiel to tell the prophets? Yeah. To hear ye the word of the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Pray down to God. Now listen. You know what the Bible said? Amen. In order to preach your gospel, brother, you must walk it. Amen. Yeah. Hey, if you're going to preach it, live it. Amen. Can I get an amen? Yeah. It'd be on my heart for me to preach to this sister to do right and me not do it right. Can I get an amen? Yeah. It'd be hard for me to lead this young man here by example if I wasn't living it. Amen. Can I get an amen? If I didn't believe God's Word, it'd be sort of hard for me to get Helen to believe it. Can I get an amen? You want to know where the problem's at? It starts in the pulpits. Can I get an amen? Glory to the Lamb of God. Amen. 
Now there's a whole lot of preachers when they hear this CD and go, know why? Bless him, Lord. I'm going to preach a book. That way nobody can argue with you. Amen. 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 I thought about this, Josh. I've got a responsibility to tell the truth. Whether it hurts your feelings or whether it don't, I've got a responsibility to the Lord Jesus Christ to tell you the truth. Amen. Can I get an amen? Amen. Being truthful, the Bible said the truth will set you free. Amen. Huh? Amen. The truth will get you where you need to be straight up. You don't have to suffer for a long time. Amen. To get there, I, I, I ain't going to get in on that. i got to preach a little. And the Bible said, Thus saith the Lord God, Woe unto the foolish prophets that follow their own spirit and have seen nothing. Can I get an amen? Amen. 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 Now listen. The Bible teaches me in the Word of God, sister, that they was men that run to and fro and they began to tell it. God told them something that they didn't. Amen. God said, I said nothing. And the Bible said if these men tell you that God told them something was coming to pass and it didn't shortly come to pass for those men to be taken out and stoned to death according to the Word of God. And you know why? Because they was a prophesying lies. Amen. But yet in this day and time we live, people in the congregation of the righteous knowing the man of God is not qualified to preach, well, let him stand in the pulpit and dry up and die. Can I get a amen? Come on, praise God. Get in the same church. Amen. Oh, oh, I'm about to my breath. You better pray this to me. I thought about this, sister. I know why God called me to preach. It's for the last hour. Amen. Huh? And I found out this day and time we live, sister. Praise God, if you're winning souls for God, these other preachers will get mad and talk about you like a dog. When they ought to be jumping in here and trying to help us, we need somebody to Jesus. If they truly believe that God was a cuss in the sun to come back at any moment. Amen. That's right. If I didn't believe the book, I wouldn't try to convince you into believing. Amen. I got to preach. You better pray. And the Bible said, O Israel, thy prophets are like the foxes in the desert. Ye have not gone up into the gaps, neither made up the heads for the house of Israel to stand in the battle in the day of the Lord. They have seen vanity and lying of divination, saying, The Lord saith, and the Lord saith not, and the Lord hath not sent them, and they have made others to hope, amen, that that they would confirm the word. Now listen, the Bible said, Amen. How can they hear? Hey, how can they believe in whom they've not heard? How can they hear without a preacher? And how can they preach except they be sent? Can I get an Amen? Hey, praise God. Did you know there's lost people leaving? Hey, man, the church houses of America. Say, preacher, you're pregnant. I know a young man that come to me and told me he was going to seminary school to become a preacher. He was one of the highest profession. Hey man, paid professions. It wasn't America. I said it won't work. He said, how do you know? I said, the first qualification, you got to be saved. And you ain't saved. Can I get a name? You said it for the money. Amen. I'll tell you right now, them scholars of God will make more money for hush money than they would Amen. <laughs> huh? Come on. My God, I'm telling you the truth. I may be the hard headed spell you'll ever meet, but I'm here to tell you I know what the book says. And I know this stuff ain't going to go. And I'm going to preach a little bit. I know, brother, I prayed about it. Me and you talked about it. how can people live the way they live and profess to be a child of God. And you know, I know how they can. You know why? Because they're cold and indifferent. And some of them, amen, may be saved, but they're confused, sister. The Bible said that God's not the author of confusion. Can I get an amen? They see deacons, amen. I live in like hell. They see preachers to live in like hell. Song leaders to live in like hell. And they can't figure it out. Said, well, if we're a deacon, praise God, he must be all right. Only deacons will die, Jonah. 
Lord. 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 I'm praying with them. You better pray. A couple of years ago, this young lady come to me in, the, in this in this town, amen, in Our Ice County, and she said, "Preacher, I want you to pray." I said, "All right, now I just don't pray for anything. I want to know what I'm asking God for, amen. I've done told you, amen. If you want a red, and praise God, pray for a red. Uh, works, don't it? Amen." amen. She said, this is what's the problem. She said, me and my husband moved in this county from down the country, and she said, we got to go into this church, and we decided we liked this church, so we joined the church and was baptized. Said a little later on in years, said, they put my husband in as a deacon. He's a deacon in this church. And said, me and the pastors are praying this year in revival that God would save my husband. Amen. You see, they already baptized him. Already put him in an office in the church knowing that this man was lost without God. Now I'm going to tell you something. There's something wrong a little higher up than the deaconship. Can I get an amen? Honey, let me tell you something. The spirit of deception has flooded that whole building because of somebody, a prophesying lies. Can I get an amen? Amen. You see, you can't work for a man that you've never been acquainted with. Can I get a name man? But I'm working for the paymaster and his name's Jesus. I'm going to preach a little more. I'm still in the book, ain't it, Joe? Now, I know people don't like this, son. Huh? And the Bible said, Amen, now listen. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, because ye have spoken vanity and seen lies, therefore behold, I am against you, saith the Lord God. Amen? <laughs> Did you hear what I just said? That tells me that, praise God, Amen, this stuff that's going on, Amen, God is not for it. Amen. Hey, do I need to read it again? The Lord said, I'm against you. Yeah. God don't like that stuff. He sets standards in the house of God. Hey, come on. Amen. <laughs> don't get quiet, man. Yeah, It'll be all right, man. <laughs> and the Bible said, Amen. Now listen. And mine hand shall be upon the prophets that see vanity and that divine lies. Amen. They shall not be in the assembly of my people, neither shall they be written in the writing of the house of Israel, neither shall they enter into the land of Israel, and ye shall know that I am the Lord God. Amen. And he said, Because, even because they have seduced my people, saying, Peace, and there was no peace, and one built upon a wall, and lo, others dabbed it with the untempered mortar. Amen. And the Bible said, Saying to them which dab it, with untempered mortar, that it shall fall. There shall be an overflowing shower, and ye, O great hailstorm, shall fall, and all stormy winds shall rend it. Amen. Lo, when the wall is fallen, shall it not be said unto you, Where is the dabbing wherewith ye have dabbed it? Now I'm going to explain that to you. I woke up this morning, amen, and this scripture on my mind. Do you know most people don't even know what he was talking about? Hey man, sure they built the wall out of lies in the sea. Hey man, they preached out of the pulpit. Hey man, out of their own understanding. Hey man, out of their own spirit, the Bible said. Hey man, they built them up a wall and seduced the people and deceived them, sister. Hey man, now listen. The Bible spoke about them speaking with seducing spirits. The Bible said they were men and seducers would wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Hey Amen. But the Bible said they build a wall and here comes somebody along and dab you with undifferent mortar. And the Bible said there's a wind to come in. Hey, thank God for the wind of the doctrine of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Woo! I'm going to slow down and spray it to you. Thought about this since early this morning. 
There's a whole lot of construction people in this church, and you'll know what I'm talking about. Name and eight, that's enough about it. Praise God to understand. It. Yeah. When you go to stick a block wall up, praise God, or a foundation of a house, you've got to have three things to go between them blocks. You can mix your sand and mortar together. And you can pack it between the blocks. But it'll crumble and fall out. Yeah. Amen. You see, you can take the sand and mortar and mix it all you want to. Huh? But it still won't hold without one ingredient. Amen. And I'm fixing to preach. Woo! The Bible said in many a place in the Word of God that the water, amen, represented the Spirit of God. Can I get an amen? Honey, the Bible said they came and dabbed it with untempered mortar. Untempered mortar meaning not having the right mixture. You know what they left out? The water, amen. You take and mix it up and put water in it and lay your blocks and hit a bomb. Can I get an amen? And they'll stick tight. But praise God without the water, it'll fall down. Amen. Same way in the house of God. Without the Spirit of God, it'll fall apart. Now you want me to tell you what will happen with this kind of preaching? Bless him all. Mm -hmm. You can sit under this kind of preaching and it won't bother you to have beer going for his right now. Uh-oh. Go get quiet now. Oh, no. You can sit under that kind of doctor without the water. Woo! Which is the Spirit of God. I'm going to explain that to you one more time. Amen. And then it won't bother you to go and sleep with your, your amen, boyfriend or girlfriend all weekend, Lord. Don't get quiet there. Bless you, Lord. You can sit in that kind of meeting and they won't bother you to cuss and lie. Well, it's true. <coughs> but when that water's at it, it'll cause you to bomb with a cheap cornerstone Amen. on the building. They laid out the foundation of this world, amen. And his name is Jesus. And when you get stuck on Jesus, praise God, you'll see things a little different. And you'll know what's right and what's wrong, amen. Amen. Hold on, Lord. Woo! That's him, Lord. Preacher's a nice cow. I hope when I do get this spot. Amen. Because anybody that would tell a young person in their church, amen, to go out and find you a maid, amen, and sleep with that person, praise God, out of wedlock, to supply, amen, your, your amen, amen, desires of the flesh, and go on for God is a liar, amen. amen. Hey, come on. Honey, that's a lie right out of hell. And according to the seventh chapter of the book of Proverbs, the Bible said the end of that road, it leads to hell, amen. Get out. Your body is a temple of the Lord. The Bible said every sin is without the body, a saving the sin of fornication. And praise God, don't you know that God dwells in your body? Amen. I get to preach that one Sunday morning. People won't like that either. Young men, let me tell you what God said. You get caught, you get down weak on God, and you sit around in these places where they ain't telling you the truth. And the first thing you know, you don't find no harm in anybody. That's true. That's true. That's true. Tell people. If you got a dog that kills a skunk, I wish Brother Nathan was here tonight. <laughs> Yeah. 
I get his attention. <laughs> he had a skunk killer boy. <laughs> Every time I went home, that thing stinks so bad you couldn't get it back in the box. Hey <laughs> man, you don't tell me the truth. You ever noticed, thank praise God, you've done it more than I have. No you ever since you a little bitty boy? If you get an old dog and you kill a skunk, you get to where you don't pay no attention to it. How do you smell it so long? It's just just like you get accustomed to it. Same way with sitting around sin. First thing you know, you've accepted it, amen, and it don't look as bad. Well, Can I get an amen? Yeah. Well, the preachers are doing it. The deacons are doing it. Well, the piano players are doing it, preacher. My God, let me tell you something. Everybody ain't a doing it. Can I get an amen? Now let me give you young men some advice. Hallelujah about this thing. Apostle Paul said it'd be better for you not to even touch a wall. Amen. Amen. And the Bible said if you can't contain yourself, praise God, amen, it's better for you to marry than to burn. Amen. Amen. Yeah. People use the word love, amen, pretty loosely. Yeah. Huh? Amen. And I'm going to give you young ladies some advice. Huh? Amen. Let's see what If they say they love you and won't marry you, you find you somebody else. Amen. Woo, come on. That's right. Uh-oh. Uh Help it, Lord. Lord. Got quiet, didn't it? Yeah, it's pretty quiet. Huh? It gets quiet, don't it? You see, you don't have to like me. You don't even have to have nothing to do with me. But I take you in the Word of God and prove to you every word that I've preached tonight. Right. Amen. Amen. Every word. That's right. Amen. Huh? Come on. You know what I want? Praise God, brother. I want the best for you and your family. Amen. Amen. I want the best for my girls. You know what I want for my youngest? Y'all let me tell you what I want for my girls. And one of them to sit right here, the mother to sit here, I tell her the same thing. And I'm told. You know what I want to be able to do? Is to see them, amen. Get married to somebody that loves them, that loves the Lord, amen. That'll amen. treat them like God said to treat them, amen. amen. So their daddy, amen. A man of God, when they build a house, I can help them build a house, amen. And when things come in their life, I can help them with it, amen. 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 You see, this is the way it works. They're living like hell. I can't help. Amen. They know I love them, but I will not put them to sleep. Amen. 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 So preacher, you crazy? I ain't helping. I won't haul you to buy beer, praise God, and I won't back my youngins up when they're living like hell. You get mad at me? You want to listen? Well, I got to sit right here. She'll tell you the truth. I've never compromised them. I can't help what they do. They're grown. I've raised them the way God said to raise them. Amen. But you mamas and you daddies better be giving your kids some advice. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Not of yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I think it does some good to get in the Word of God and go to studying about how young women and young men are dying. Can I get an amen? amen. amen. And I can tell you right now, it won't be the customs of this life. Amen. Woo! Look out! Amen. When you get in tune with God, things will bother you. That's right. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen? You sit in this dead stuff long enough. And you know what you'll do? You'll go to acting just like everybody's sitting around you. Amen. You ever noticed it? Yes, sir. Young people, you ever noticed it? Huh? I've noticed a lot of things. You can change people's life by the clothes you wear. I promise you, if I wore a pink shirt with a purple tie, praise God, long enough, somebody in this church would have one on. Amen. 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 I thought, what happened, man? You think it's funny, but I'm telling you the truth. Huh? Can't get an amen. amen. That's just the way people are. 
You sit around this mess long enough, and the first thing you know, you're going to fall right into the same mess. Amen, y'all. We've seen it, brother. I've seen people who used to preach the gospel, praise God, just fell off the wagon, amen, and went to preaching customs and preaching, amen, praise God, fables, and going along with the junk, amen. You know why? Because sin come home to them. This is the way it works, church. This is the way sin works. I've had them tell me, sister, praise God, I preached against it for 40 years, but when you come home, it ain't the same. Praise God, what's different about it? That's right. Your youngins may grow up and mess up, but I'm telling you right now, praise God, condoning it won't help you. Amen. If you want to get them and help them, tell them the truth. That's right. Word of God and help them. Huh? This is the way I see things, and you'll understand it right down to the letter. And my mom and dad knows I don't compromise. My sisters know I don't compromise. My wife will tell you I don't compromise. It's the Word of God, and I can't play with it. Can you? Amen. Amen. Now listen to me. This is the way it works. If they sin in your yard, and I'm going to tell it to you like this, you're all country. If your dog brings something dead and rotten in your yard, and you see that's the way sin smells to God. Mm -hmm. Come on. Amen. And it brings it to your yard, and my dog comes to your house and drags it over into my yard. Do you know what? That thing's still dead and rotten, amen. amen. And it still stinks, and it's gonna stink in my yard till you know what? I grab a shovel up and take it somewhere and get rid of it. Can I get an amen? And do you know how you're going to get rid of sin? On your knees, repent, amen, and let God take care of it. Can I get an amen? Leave it with God and He'll get rid of it. Amen. Because if you ain't careful, that thing that's in your house is stinking so bad. It'll get so bad you can't touch it. Amen. You can't stomach to touch it. Bless him, Lord. Huh? Yeah. I don't why it's come to my mind. I'm going to tell it anyway. <laughs> I've got no one-eyed shepherd dog and she just guards everything in the night and she barks all night long and I think it's because she can't see without one eye. She thinks stuff's sneaking up on the other side and I think that's what it is. <laughs> I'm telling the truth, I'm telling the truth on it. She walks the perimeter of my, bed, of my house, amen, up and down the dirt road all night long to bark. Every once in a while you'll get up and she'll have a possum caught and hit dead in the yard. Usually I'll try to grab it. My wife will tell me, you better get a shovel and get that possum out of here. It'll go stinking. <laughs> and after a couple of days, I usually grab a shovel and I'll get it out and get it around me and all. <laughs> I'm telling the truth. But the other day, a while back, that little dog come and got a possum and brought it in our yard. And we walked by that possum so many days till it swelled up so big it's going to bust. <laughs> and you know what? I was afraid to touch it with a shovel. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the way she said it? Yeah, That's right. After a while, you're afraid to. Yeah. Uh oh, come on. I'm telling you the truth. Oh, man. After you let it go so long, it festers so long, it begins to swell and stink so bad, you get to where you're afraid to stink. Because you know why? Because everybody in your life around you has been included in that mess. Amen. Amen. And you know that if you get straightened out with God now, you're going to have to apologize to a whole lot of people. Can you get that? Amen. Amen. You know what I finally done? I let that possum lay there to praise God that rotted away and I got the hey listen. The bones is probably still laying there. 
still didn't change the fact that you were wrong. You didn't believe the life. You can understand that, can't you? Yeah. This may be the oddest preaching you've ever heard in your life, but I promise you even these little kids can understand it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Huh? You want God to bless you, live for God. Amen. 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 Come on. Everybody's being blessed, sister, but praise God, let me tell you something. Amen. When, when somebody that's living for God's blessed, and then somebody today sees them being blessed, praise God, then they're jealous. Yeah. That's right. That's right. You've got the same God as I've got. Amen. Amen. Huh? Get down to business with this thing. Can I get an amen? amen. But this amen. dead preaching, brother, without the walk. The Bible said they preached, prophesied out of their own spirit. Yeah. Yep. Huh? There's too many doing it on their own. Yeah, amen. Yeah. <coughs> huh? Come on. And then people that's coming out of these dead places, amen, and telling other people, oh, it's all right, my preacher said it. It'd be fine, don't worry about it. <coughs> and the first thing you know, if you err from your faith, and the word that's been preached to you, you'll find yourself falling right into the same stuff with it. Amen. amen. And then the next thing you know, it's done swelled up and rotten, praise God, and it's stinking all over your yard. I love you tonight. The reason I preach to you as hard as I do, there's a lady told me out at the tent meeting, and I'm going to tell this and I'm going to hush. We'll get us a song. Brother Josh, you just have to get ready. They say we make them sing too much, but they don't come near enough. <laughs> no, I like to tell you, I tell you, I love this family right here. Amen. There's a lady told me at the tent meeting, she said, I'm going to pray. And I said, thank you, sister. You pray for me. I need it. She said, not for you. She said, I'm going to pray for your congregation because you're awful hard on it. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something, church. Where would you be if I wasn't hard on it? Where would you be if I didn't tell you more? Amen. If I compromise, where would our young people? Where would be these little girls at? You see, this is where we're at. I'm going to just get ready to sing. Here a while back, you know, everybody thought it was funny when they brought in the liquor door. Brother talked about, hey amen, the pubs and the places to drink all over Ash County now. Sit on the sidewalk, praise God. I can remember a time you got out on the sidewalk drugs. They lock you up. Like that, that, brother. Don't ask me how I know that. But I'm telling you, they lock you up. But now they can sit on the sidewalk and drink your wine and stagger up and down the street and nobody says nothing. And it don't bother nobody around them. Nope. My God, something's happening. A couple of years ago, they started about bringing in adult entertainment. One of the fellas we worked with, supposed to be a preacher, he said, well, a little, they got a, a, a liquor store, a little hoochie-coochie ain't going to hurt you, and they all laughed. All but me. And I turned and asked him, I said, ain't you some of you men got young girls? They said, yeah. Well, I said, you keep life. I said, keep laughing. It's funny. But I said, when they see dads are laughing and joking about it, and when they turn 18 years old and decide they want to, amen, listen, to amen, praise God, dance in a hoochie cooch joy, praise God, and your daughter that you love with all your heart in a dancing, amen, naked, but more some old perverts, I said, praise God, how funny will it be then? Honey, that's shutting up. Who are y'all? That wasn't a lie. Praise God, that had the spirit of truth about it, brother. You better think about how you raise them. Amen. I don't think that junk's fun. I prayed with too many of these young people, praise God, when their life fell apart because of the people that slipped around them when they lived like hell. Amen. Because of some preacher telling them that it's all right to do this and that. And when their whole world falls apart and their lives hurt, amen. Then you know what they'll do? They'll come and sit on the porch and talk to somebody that won't lie to them. Amen. You see, I may hurt your feelings, but it's because I love you. Amen. amen. You see, I can't lie to you because I love you. 
you love somebody, you can't lie to them. You're going to go ahead and say, I'm going to try the hush, praise God. Can't you see it? You want to know why people's like you are? Praise God, they blame it on everybody in the country, but I blame it on, praise God, they man in the pulpits. Preaching lies. Prophesying out of their own spirit. And then you know who's suffering? The young men and women and the young people in the church. The ones that believe in that what comes out of this pulpit is the gospel and don't know anybody. Because they never tasted the power of God. You see, they never tasted what you got in this life on the Lord's Creek. Amen. Because they never experienced that praise God.
And that Sunday evening, I told my wife and sister Melissa Ashley going home. They think I'm crazy. I said, you'll never believe what God showed me. They said, what? I said, Brother Buck Dick was coming to our church. And I'll never forget what Sister Melissa said. She said, I'm not making fun, but I'd like to ask you a question. She said, when God shows you stuff, does He tell you when it's going to happen? Well, I said, not this time, but He's coming. Monday evening, I saw God on the way Brother Buck Benny Christ. He said, Preacher, pray for me. I said, Tell me why. He said, I don't know what's happening. But he said, God spoke to my heart and he told me to leave my church. He said, To come to your church. Hey! Praise God! Things is a change in people! Amen. Get excited, amen. Woo! Oh, I'm about to fly. Go ahead and sing less fellowship. I ain't gonna keep y'all night for that. I'll make more this turn loose and have charm. Hey! Swing it, praise God.